Welcome to Io, one of the moons of Jupiter. This is actually a very interesting moon because it's famous for its volcanoes and it's also famous for its unusual, somewhat scary color. Now you can kind of see the volcanoes right here. And as you can imagine, these volcanoes produce quite a lot of various plumes that basically shoot out a lot of material into the, um, into the atmosphere, the Io's atmosphere. Now today we're actually going to talk about this atmosphere because we've recently discovered something very, very interesting about it. In this video, we're going to just focus on Io's atmosphere and hopefully you learn something from it. Now, if you actually enjoy these videos and if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that subscribe button right now. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so what is it that we've discovered recently about Aya? Well, it's actually related to its atmosphere. I'm going to zoom out here for a second and show you the, uh, the actual atmospheric parameter. So most of the um, atmosphere on this beautiful moon uh, consists of what's known as um, sulfur dioxide, it's SO2. And it's basically stuff that is produced by the volcanoes, obviously. As they shoot out various materials, most of these materials are essentially sulfur dioxide. Um, and uh, unfortunately for Io, or I guess maybe fortunately for Io, there isn't that much of atmosphere, but it does have um, some of it. Um, here, the actual atmospheric pressure is much, much, much lower than, than that on Earth. Um, you can kind of see it right here. So this is like basically a billion times less uh, more potent than atmosphere on Earth. But it is kind of visible. If, you, if I actually look right here, you can see there is a bit of atmosphere showing. But what we actually discovered is not this, obviously. We've discovered something really interesting. I'm going to accelerate time just to show you as it, um, as it starts orbiting around Jupiter. Uh, here you go. So there was, there's a little bit of a period, and specifically it's about 1.7 Earth days, when Io is actually completely covered by the shadow of Jupiter. It's going to happen right now, and here we go. Now, this will last for about 1.7 Earth days, and during that time, interestingly, the entire atmosphere of uh, Io actually disappears. And it disappears for a very interesting chemical reason. So basically here, currently the temperature is a little bit colder than it used to be when Io was in the sun. And the temperature here is approximately minus 168 degrees Celsius. But I think instead of me talking about it, I'm gonna try to demonstrate this for you using Universe Sandbox, and because it actually allows us to create atmosphere more visually. And so now that we're actually in Universe MX2, we're going to take a look at this in a little bit more detail. So let's actually find Io, which is right here, zoom into it, and uh, take a look at its atmosphere, which I don't actually think it currently has. If we look at it, yeah, atmospheric um, pressure of zero. We're going to add just a little bit, so about half of Pascal. I don't know if this is actually going to show us anything. Unfortunately, I think it doesn't. All right, what about if I actually add a little bit more? And here, just to make it a little bit more dramatic, I had to add a lot more atmosphere because now we kind of can see a little bit of a layer right there. So there's a bit of an atmospheric layer that you can kind of see. I also increased the temperature just to make this a little bit uh, more visible. But basically, the temperature um, currently, um, when you're actually uh, out of the shadow of Jupiter, basically right now, the temperature here would be about minus 150 degrees Celsius. So when Io is outside of the shadow of Jupiter and when it's basically illuminated by the sun, it um, has a slightly higher temperature by about 18 degrees. And uh, because of this, the actual ice on its surface, specifically sulfur dioxide or SO2 ice, starts to sublimate, basically turns into gas. As it does that, as all of this stuff on the surface starts to sublimate, it's released into the atmosphere, which you can kind of see here, and it forms this very, very, very thin shell. And this is, of course, when it's still in the sunlight. Um, as it basically moves around Jupiter, as it uh, orbits around Jupiter, it at some point reaches the shadow of Jupiter. Basically, it becomes eclipsed by Jupiter, and this will last for about 1.7 days, and it's going to start happening right about now here we go almost there okay perfect so i think this is i think this is it there we go so this is the shadow of jupiter when this happens obviously it receives a lot less light and suddenly the temperature drops to about minus 168. Uh, this temperature um sulfur dioxide gas that you can kind of see right here the little layer of gas um, cannot actually stay as a gas anymore and becomes ice once again. So it actually starts to return back into the ice form 
And so the entire atmosphere, which you can kind of see, I think if I put it against the background here. Okay, there we go. There's a bit of a red layer right here. Uh, this entire layer will actually disappear for about uh, close to 30 hours or Earth hours. So this will be gone and basically there will be absolutely no atmosphere on Io now. So in other words, Io is the first object we've discovered that has this kind of a breathing atmosphere. It appears when it's in the sunlight. So basically when it's a little bit warmer here. And then as it reaches the darker side of Jupiter, it disappears again um, and basically becomes ice again. Uh, so for the most part, because it spends most of its time in the sunlight, there is atmosphere, but there is this one period right around here for almost two days, Earth days, when it actually has nothing on the surface. And this is actually very interesting because, um, well, first of all, Io's plumes and Io's atmosphere is responsible for a lot of various effects in the Jupiter system, including Jupiter's aurora, which usually appear on the northern and southern side, which unfortunately we don't really see in this game, but they are usually there. And of course, it's also responsible for one of the rings of Jupiter. Uh, because of these plumes, because of the sulfur dioxide um, released from the volcanoes, uh, one of the rings of Jupiter is actually formed um, from, from these plumes, from this atmosphere. And there's actually quite a lot of other really interesting effects um, of this atmosphere, including the fact that um, as you go higher and higher uh, from Io, basically, as, if you're on the surface, it's really cold. But as you go higher and higher, the temperature actually increases to the point where... And let me just actually recreate the atmosphere again so you can kind of see it. And so there we go. There's a, a little bit of atmosphere right there that's visible. So basically, as you leave this area and as you approach higher area um, at an altitude of about 400 to 500 kilometers, the temperature here is actually uh, scolding 1500 degrees Celsius. It becomes plasma-like. It becomes super, super hot. Uh, so interestingly, the atmospheric effects on Io are very, very unusual and close to basically opposite of, of uh, what we have on Earth. So this atmosphere changes quite a lot. It's a lot hotter, higher from the planet than um, closer to the ground. And uh, it's also responsible for the formation of various effects in Jupiter's system, including one of its rings. So that's what we've discovered so far. But now that we actually have Juno mission that has arrived to Jupiter and started exploring uh, both Jupiter and its moons once again, we're hopefully going to learn a lot more both about Jupiter and about its satellites in near future before the end of the mission sometime around 2020. Now, as for this video, I think that's all I wanted to say. I basically wanted to talk about the amazing atmospheric effects on this somewhat scary but somewhat beautiful moon called Io, about which we're definitely going to talk about in the future once again. And if you actually haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button and also share this video with someone who you think may learn something from it. Like this video if you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye-bye. And how can I end this video without smacking something into something? Let's actually choose a minor object, decrease the time just a little bit, and go for a crazy launch. Yay! Now we're going to make a slightly different atmosphere, composed of rocks, and dust, and more rocks, and more dust. And, hey, this kind of looks like an eye. Anyway, see you later. Bye-bye.